Hello, all right. So we are gonna talk today about why are maintenance brakes so incredibly important. And this is all coming from a wonderful conversation I had with one of my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. She had shared with me that she had thought we were going to set her habits the way she was going to live in maintenance and we were just going to let her weight trickle down and she would kind of figure out maintenance when she got there because she was living the lifestyle she had the habits that she was going to have in maintenance and she didn't really need to take a maintenance break and i said oh my gosh that's not true <laughs> and we're gonna talk about why so she said well I always got from the show it seemed like people went on maintenance breaks when they went on vacation or when they had a holiday or when they were struggling and I said of course yes these are all times that are really good to take maintenance breaks but doing the active practice of maintaining is so essential so I always say you know we have lots of practice dieting we have lots of practice of doing the habits of tracking buying groceries meal planning you know all that kind of stuff when we want to lose weight when the goal is to and i call it your pellet gets released you're the rat doing the behaviors and then you get a pellet oh i lost weight good i'm doing all the actions i get a pellet yes <laughs> Um, I said, you know, so you're, so you're doing all the actions, you're getting the pellet released, but what happens when you go to maintenance and you're doing all the habits? Like for the last 10 years I've been maintaining, you know what I do every day? Pre-journal my food or journal it in some way. I go for my walks, I do my meal planning. Nothing has changed. The habits for Heather at 300 pounds and the habits of Heather at 155 pounds same habits over the course of 15 years i've modified a lot of things but same habits and here's the thing when you don't get your pellet the experience is a hundred percent different you have to have a lot of internal patience with yourself you have to be willing to do the habits with no reward you have to be willing to do the habits where your lower brain is kind of like ho oh, hum about the whole thing because there's nothing you're achieving you're kind of like idling there that's the way it appears right so there's a huge gift to pausing your weight loss and maintaining on purpose because when you get to the end and you're doing all the things and you have never sat with that discomfort you're not going to know what to do with it um, I have taken so many clients, we get them to a, a weight that's better than where they were. We say, okay, we're going to take time off now. We're going to go for a month where you're going to eat at maintenance. Whole lot of lower brain chatter comes up. Whole lot of struggle happens. Not because they don't know what to do. Not because they uh, don't understand the habits. But because there is so much talk in your head about this idea of, well, I still have a lot of weight to lose. I need to get this done. Da, 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 da. They feel a lot of anxiety and stress around it sometimes. Now, every great once in a while, you'll run into somebody who's like, oh, this is awesome. I actually totally do weight. But what it also does, the other gift of doing that, is you get to see where you're rushing off to. So, so often when people have tried to lose weight, it's with this idea of, oh, when I get there, I will feel, fill in the blank, confident, happy, successful, da, da, da. unless you have figured out how to shut your lower brain down, it'll find something else. It'll tell you you need to lose 10 more pounds. It'll tell you you got saggy skin, you need to get something done about that. There's always going to be a new problem to solve. So this idea of how you think you're going to feel when you get to maintenance is kind of an illusion. It's like you're in an oasis and you think, Ooh, when I get to there, then I can drink the water. <laughs> no, just drink the water now because you're, when you get there, it's all the same stuff. So here's what you want to think about. Maintenance breaks are great. She asked me a good question. She said, do we have to have a maintenance break from a weight loss perspective, a physical perspective? No. If you look at what happened to people in concentration camps, their weight steadily went down. Like there was no, there there's no metabolic bomb out. Like you're, you're going to lose weight. If I bring you to my house and I put you in a room and I give you a calorie target that produces weight loss, I can physically keep you there and you will lose all your weight. 
But the problem is we live in a free living society and most people psychologically and behaviorally cannot do that. They get bored, distracted, have a problem when things aren't going fast enough. They short wire processes because that's the way your brain's designed. Like you don't think about every single thing you do when you get in the car to drive somewhere, you just do it. The problem with food and weight loss is that for many people, it's super easy to short change processes to where they fill in their calorie deficits because they get, I don't want to say lazy, but they get very compliant or complacent with what they're doing. No, complacent, not compliant. They get uh, complacent. And so what ends up happening is their calories are creeping up, but they're not aware of it because they've short changed processes. They're not as like on top of things as they were when they first started. And they get bored and they have life events come in. And many people do not know how to navigate those. So it's always been, I'm either dieting or I'm not dieting. Going to maintenance is always a much smarter option. So this is why I talk to people about doing it. They, and I said, they get bored of the process. So taking maintenance breaks, in my opinion, is psychologically and behaviorally essential to getting the weight off and keeping it off. But even if you think you're the person who's like, yep, yeah, Heather, put me in the room, give me 1500 calories every day. I can handle it. I'm good. You are still missing something. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Yes, physically, you can do that. But when it comes to sitting with this idea of eating at, say, we'll use that person as an example, 1800 calories every day, still having to, you know, to, to write out what you're eating, do the process. But now the scale doesn't go down. When that reward is taken away, this whole thing changes. Your perspective of this whole thing changes. I know because I went through it personally. I have so many, we have over 114 maintainers I've, in our community, the Half Size Me community. I've listened to them talk about it. And I will tell you now, having walked through this with so many of my coaching clients, it changes how they see this process. So let's just say you go, you know what? I'm gonna be in a deficit for two months, maintenance for one. In that maintenance month or whatever you choose to do, you will have a learning opportunity. What is it like to do these daily behaviors and not get the reward of weight loss? And what is it that I feel I'm rushing to? When I get that idea of when I get to my goal weight, I will be fill in the blank. And, and what is it that I think I'm going to get? And this is what my day-to-day -day life is going to actually look like. You're practicing where your life will be in the future. And this is what it will look like. And that's eye-opening because, because so many people have either done dieting or not dieting. Let me define. Dieting, ooh, I want to get to such and such a weight. I'm going to eat at 1,500 calories every day. And when I get there, I'll figure out maintenance. Diet, 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 do all the things, feel really good, see the scale going down. And then I get to the end and I don't know what to do. Not dieting is what most people do at holidays, vacations, weekends, when they're feeling frustrated. It's the, oh, I'm going on vacation. Hmm. I'm just gonna not worry about any of this. <laughs> that is not dieting. Not dieting is I'm not tracking anything, not monitoring my food intake, not worrying about doing my workouts, not worrying about meal planning or grocery shopping. So it's the, it's the complete abandonment of doing the process. The thing I am proposing is neither of those. What I am proposing is you do the process, you eat at a calorie intake that maintains your current body weight, and you don't get the reward of weight loss, but you also don't get the punishment of the weight gain. You're in this weird limbo world that you have not gotten to experience before. Do not rob yourself of that experience. If I were to say to you, what is it that you are the best served to spend time learning? It's maintenance. People diet. You probably have spent 20 years, 30 years, maybe 10 years, dieting. You know how to diet. That's not anything new. What you don't know how to do is maintain. How do I know that? Because you wouldn't be trying to lose the weight again if you had maintained the last time you did the diet. So it's not a weight loss problem, the dieting. It's more a lack of understanding how to keep it off, right? So there's, it's kind of like we send kids to school 
and they're really good at math. We'll just use this as an example. They're super good at math. They're like cracking algebra, but they're illiterate. They can't read. No one sat down and taught them how to read. They have no clue how to read a book, but they can do math. So every time you bring them to my class, I'm like, well, I'm just gonna give them more math. These kids can't read. Shouldn't somebody be teaching them how to read? Shouldn't that be like the priority? See the difference? Like in that example, you'd be like, of course, take the kids off teaching the math for a while. Do an intensive on reading. Let's get these kids all literate, right? Like to where they can at least read a Dick and Jane book. You know, you would have a different perspective because of the subject matter. What I am saying is that's where everyone is with weight loss. They have all done diets super proficient. They're not proficient at maintaining, yet we refuse to spend the time practicing it. We're afraid of it. We think it's gonna hurt us. No, we can only help you. It's like you're the kid who can't read. By the end of the intensive, you get to read. Think about that. So just want to encourage you, if you're questioning, why would I need a maintenance break? How could this possibly be helpful? It might slow down my progress. Progress to where? Where are you going? Like the things you're doing today, you're doing for the rest of your life. There is no getting off the train. Now, when you take that weight loss off the table, the, maybe the struggle and the real question is, how will, I, how will I make myself do this process when I don't get the pellet of the weight loss? That's a much, much more genuine question to, to do and which really should motivate you to practice it. So when it happens, you're not floundering, okay? So just want to encourage you, think about maintenance breaks differently. So many good reasons to do it. I hope this video helps. Please like and subscribe and I will talk to you soon.